Welcome back to All the Things with Whitney and Mandy. Mandy is not with me today. Um, I'm here today to talk about something that I specifically have been going through that I think might be helpful to other women that are close to my age. So if you are a male viewer, this may not be the video for you. Um, because we're going to be talking about nice, fun female things. So anyways, I am 43 years old. I will be 44 on September 15th. And people who are very close to me know that um, around, I guess it was probably April of this year, I just started feeling different. Like I was experiencing all of these symptoms. Um, I wasn't sleeping well. My energy was super low. Um, I just, I, I felt sad sometimes. And I started noticing, um, I was one of these lucky people who for you know, my, my entire life, I used to be able to brag that I was not somebody who went through premenstrual symptoms or PMS. I was not somebody who got like angry or cried or anything like that before that time of the month. Um, but over the last two or three years, I could almost predict, because I'm not very regular, but I could almost predict when my time of the month was coming because a week before, I would get emotional about something. I would start crying about something, and I would always just tell my husband I would cry, and it's not normal for me to cry. I don't normally cry, and, um, and I would say, oh, I, just, I know it's probably just my time of the month. And it would be. So, and that wasn't normal, but I don't guess I had really truly understood or recognized enough of a change to realize that, you know, something was something was going on different with my body. I was also having very frequent migraines. Um, and of course, there could be multiple things that contributed to all of these issues. Um, I did find out that I had iron deficiency anemia. My vitamin D level was almost bottomed out. Um, and I was going through a lot of stressful things at work and so you know multiple things could have kind of combined on top each of each other to kind of create some of these symptoms but I will tell you um, the the treatment that I have gone through over the summer that I feel like had the most impact and helped me the most was my husband read an article um, of all people to catch, you know, what was going on with me, he read a, an article about perimenopause and he was looking at the symptoms and he sent it to me and he was like, babe, I think this could be what's going on with you. And so I looked at it and I was like, yeah, it does have all of the symptoms that I'm experiencing. And so um, I decided that I would call a doctor's office that um, specializes in hormones and hormone therapy here in the Memphis area and made an appointment. And what they do is, is that um, they have you go and get lab work ahead of time before they set up your appointment. And they're gonna base their decision about whether or not you need to come to an appointment to them based off of your lab work. So I got the lab work um, at the same time that they did. And I'm looking at it, I've, I've got it in front of me. I'm looking at it and the lab levels look like everything's normal and everything's fine. And so I thought they were probably gonna call me and say that I did not need to come in for an appointment. Um, and that was not the case. So they called me and they said, yeah, we definitely see some things with your levels that we think we could work on. And that could be, you know, you could benefit from our treatment. So they made me an appointment. I went in and here's what was explained to me. So when I looked at my levels that, that came back from the labs, it showed that for testosterone, I had a, um, range of 11. My lab value is 11 for it. And it shows that normal range is 2 to 45. Um, what my doctor helped me understand is that once you're outside of this normal range, you're considered to be postmenopausal. So just because I'm not in menopause yet or gone through menopause yet does not mean that my levels are functioning, functioning normally or like they should be. And so she said, you know, your, your level is low and you could benefit a lot energy level wise and all the symptoms that you're having by doing pellet therapy to increase your testosterone. So um, all of this being said, you know, I'd gone to a primary care doctor, um, seen other doctors, nobody, nobody caught this, 
My husband caught it in an article and I had to find a specialist and they helped me understand my labs and what was going on. So I wanna share this with you all because there might be a lot of other women out there who are experiencing the same thing and might be able to benefit from the treatment that I went through. So I had on that very first visit, oh, it's called pellet therapy, a pellet implanted. So what they do is, is just right there um, in the office, they put a little pellet um, kind of at the your hip, at the back of your hip, and um, it's implanted just right underneath the skin. They numb it locally. So, I mean, I've had more pain from, a lot more pain from uh, my tattoo removal than, than from this. There was really no pain from this. And, um, and then after that, then you start experiencing hopefully all positive side effects and positive impacts from having that pellet implanted in your system. And what you do is, is every three months, you go and you get your labs checked again, and then you go back, and if they need to insert another pellet, or they need to decrease your pellet dosage or increase your pellet dosage, you know, it's all based off of what your labs are telling the doctor. Um, so some of the things, and I'm just gonna tell you what some of the symptoms that you could have um, when you get it, and these are the negative symptoms is fluid retention, swelling of the hands and feet, breast tenderness, uterine spotting or bleeding, mood swings and irritability, facial breakout, hair loss or hair growth. Um, but again, a lot of these symptoms can be altered or fixed um, depending on like lowering or heightening your dosage and things like that. I will tell you that I um, I did experience, I think, a little bit of fluid retention, and I am having some hair loss and then some hair growth in other areas. So she did decrease my dosage the second time that I've gone and gotten the implant of the pellet again, and also prescribed a DHT blocker to try and help with, she said, once the testosterone is um, you know, getting into your system, as it's breaking down, um, that's what usually causes the negative side effects. And so the DHT blocker is supposed to help with that. I am not, I am a nurse, but I'm not a true medical professional. This is not my um, area of expertise. I'm not a physician, so I am not pretending to know all the ins and outs of this. I'm just saying from what I remember and from what I have on my um, sheet that I received from the doctor here. And then um, post-procedure instructions, again, you can go get your hair done, you can go back to work, you can go home, you can do housework, you can do whatever after you get that pellet inserted. You're not in pain, you don't have to rest, um, you're fully functioning. And then after that, you st should start seeing some positive impacts from it. So I will tell you, I'm sleeping good, my migraines have significantly decreased, um, my mood feels really good, my energy level is so much better. Um, and when I talk about sleeping, I um, just to let you guys know the severity of it, I was taking prescription medication to try and go to sleep at night. And it got to where I was taking Lunesta, was on the highest dose of Lunesta, it no longer worked for me, had to get on Ambien, Ambien no longer worked for me, then had to take Ambien XR, and that no longer worked for me. And now, after doing this pellet therapy, I am all natural with sleep. I go to sleep on my own. I do take melatonin, um, and I take, it's uh, two supplements, it's um, magnesium. I take some magnesium at nighttime, and that's it. And I'm sleeping great. I feel good. So if you're a woman and you're experiencing any strange symptoms, any things that are not normal for you, um, you might want to look into hormone therapy and more, even more specific to that, pellet therapy. So I hope that that was helpful. If there's anything I forgot to share, um, please, you know, comment down in the box below and I'm happy to answer, you know, any of your questions. And I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please hit the like button. Button, please subscribe and hit the ring bell so you can be notified of future videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.